Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Borek. I just did a video on Bobby Brink that also has the Noah Cage video linked at the end. This is going to be a video on another Flyers youngster checking in on them and giving a breakdown of their play this far in a mini player profile like I did in the Brink video and gave a full player profile of Noah Cage a couple weeks back. Um, I can do that with Brink if you guys want as well, but I figure more people know exactly fully through and through what Bobby Brink is as a top prospect in the system compared to Noah Cage, who was a sleeper prospect in the system. But, um, anyway, let's jump right into this. This one's about Ronnie Adder coming out of Western Michigan. He's the guy compared to Cage and Brink. Obviously, he's played more games than Brink. Brink's only played four. Uh, Adder's played nine. And Noah Cates has played yada, 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 yada. Where the heck did they put Noah Cates? Noah Cates has played 10 games since they haven't projected up on the first line uh, tonight, which is cool to see him get that rewarded for his great play. He's a plus three on a team that's terribly at the minus. As uh, Sandheim's a plus eight, the only other guy in the lineup. And is a plus right now. Uh, Zamula through four is a minus one, though, and that's not really his own fault. <clears throat> Kevin Connaughton. Uh, so, uh, I would say Big Z, uh, Zamula, in terms of his height being big, not necessarily his size, um, is a guy that has looked good this far in his first four, uh, in the NHL. Adder, though, he's been a tale of two cities. He's been 50-50. Uh, he's shown signs of being an NHL defenseman. I will say that. You have to look for it, and if you really watch every game, he shows a puck-moving ability. He has a goal. He has an apple. He has two points in nine games. But he shows he's not calm, cool, collected like you see uh, Igor Zamula when uh, he's out there. He's not calm, cool, collected like you're starting to see uh, some Sandheim turn into Adam Pellick where he had that break of your Zach Irwin and I, uh, the guy that used to write for Fly Jitty Gritty, were talking about that yesterday. Um, that Pellick had that year that he emerged when he was a guy that Islanders fans ripped a little bit for a while. Sandheim's kind of been that to Philly, a 17th pick in 2014. Uh, I've always liked him, but some other people have ripped him uh, as well. Uh, and that's fine because he hasn't always performed at the highest level, but he has this year and should be the Barry Ashby winner. And uh, for the last couple of months, has been by far one of the better performers of an offensive defenseman if you just look at his numbers as a whole. But um, Keith Yondel, obviously having him as a pairing partner with Ronnie Adder doesn't necessarily help either because Yondel's well past his uh, expiration date in the NHL. Great, brilliant human being. Love the dude. But that doesn't mean you keep playing him. I was fine when they broke his streak. Uh, you have to play who's doing good, and you have to play the young guys when you're rebuilding. I understand what people like uh, Setemeyer and Kochi are talking about Riley Cote. Uh, but... Um, to me, you got to perform to play. Let me just set, put it that way to put it in the simplest terms, and he's been awful this year. Uh, Felix Sandstrom through three games has been good too, which is good to see, but we're going on a tangent again like I did on the one other video. But the reason I think Adder also has struggled mightily is he hasn't necessarily, other than I think he's seen he's yeah he's seen a couple shifts with Provy uh, when he started the first game with Provy. That's the only fantastic defenseman he's played with. Keith Yandel used to be a fantastic offensive defenseman. Not anymore. And then Kevin Connaughton is a good AHL defenseman, more of a mediocre to okay NHL defenseman. Um, so that that factors in. That So I would say Adder still has a chance to make the team out of the gates next year, but it's not as good of a chance as Noah Cage, who's just balling out in his first 10 games. Already has five freaking points in his first 10 games. He's just killing it. Um, and please check out that video. I felt like uh, that was one that I did a pretty good job highlighting him because I look. I mean, Kate's out of Duluth. Uh, he, he's one of my favorite um, prospects that the Flyers got because he's nothing overly ridiculous. He's just a guy that plays great in both zones and is a guy that has more offense than a Tyler Pitlick speedster that plays great in both zones and has the center ability that a guy like Tyler Pitlick that we love to hear in Philly doesn't have. So... I could see Cates being a 35, 40 points producer at some point. That is more probably more 30, 35 to start and then grow from there while being fantastic defensively and drawing plays where he wins the battles but just kind of gets the fourth assist, so to speak, which doesn't go in the score sheet, but he makes a nice play to the person that gets the secondary assist and so on and so forth. I've already seen multiple plays like that by Noah Case that guys just haven't finished in or plays that guys have finished in and he hasn't necessarily gotten a point. 
uh, because he's just, say, kept it in or made a nice lead pass uh, while getting off the something like that. Um, but he's been great as a whole. But Brink, as I talked about in that other video, has been great as a whole. Owen Tippett's been getting sharper. Um, but Adder, to me, um, he what he is is, as we do a quick player breakdown around of this video, he's a great, I think, going to be first and foremost offensive NHL defenseman because uh, he comes in at 6'3", 205. I think he's going to be a checker and shot blocker on defense. But I don't know how sexy he's ever going to get as a rounded out defender in the NHL. But with the blast he has from the point that you saw at Western Michigan, with the ability to control and kind of quarterback a power play, that's something the Flyers need in the future. They have a couple catches. Amula is somebody that can play on a power play as well. Emil Andre is somebody that can play on a power play overseas that's killing it in Sweden. Uh, Sandheim's been on the power play looking good. Obviously, Cam York is a quarterback of a power play in the making. So, they have different guys. It's just about getting a coach that also uses a rotating system similar to Kirk McDonald uh, with the Reading Royals that will rotate guys in when he knows he has Zamula, when he knows he has Adder, when he knows he has Sanheim, when he knows he has Emil Andreo when he's back, if Ryan Ellis ever plays again, when he has him, that can rotate these guys in for the power to play uh, and not basically oversimplify things or overcomplicate things and go, oh, we're just going to keep continuing putting these same people in. Why? Uh, rotate different guys in if things aren't working. I understand if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but the, the Flyers power play has been one of the worst in the history of hockey. So obviously it would be nice to rotate people in. But to wrap up this video in conclusion, it's run a little bit long because in both of these videos, because that's just how I get talking about the Flyers now, I get a little ranty while also talking about how much I love individual prospects of Brink. Uh, Fair, he's not a prospect anymore, but as a player. Uh, even Frost, I still like and still believe in. Just move him to the wing. Uh, so, um, I, I love talking about that, but sometimes you do have to get into rant level with this team just because of how frustrating it's been lately. But I'm a diehard fan. I ride or die with the team. This is kind of me showing love when I go into rants because I would if I didn't care, I wouldn't do it. Um, but... To wrap this one up, Ronnie Adder, I think he is going to be an NHL defenseman. I don't have any worries or qualms about that. He's a 72nd pick in 2019. He's probably going to be one of the steals of that draft in the end. I just think he's going to take a little bit more time to develop, which is perfectly fine. He's only 23 years of age. If he's A-OK -okay ready by 25, I'm fine with that. Um, because it looks like Noah Cates and Bobby Brink are two guys you hit on that are going to be ready more out of the gate. Brink, I need to see a little bit more in his D zone, but that's something he'll grow on. He's only 5'8", so uh, he has to be more of a positional guy and a cut lanes guy than he's ever going to be a knock a guy off the pucks guy in that zone, obviously. And then Cates has the ability to knock guys off the puck a little bit more in both zones. He's just a high effort guy that I also love his get back ability. But... This has been a quick video on Ronnie Adder and also talking about kind of the youngsters as a whole and uh, how good they have fit into the mix. This has been the latest edition of The Grittiest Take. Please you subscribe down below or up above on the easy-to-use widget to help us grow to 230 or more by the end of April. I hope everyone had a good holiday weekend and is having a good start to the week. Peace out and stay safe, everybody, and enjoy the hockey.